Okay, since y prime is a slope function, let us see why the graph of y prime behaves like this graph shown below our function y is equal to f of x. So here the red curve is our um, y function and then we'll call it f and then the curve below it is our f prime. And what we'll do is we'll look at the slopes of the line standing to the red curve starting from left going to the right. As you can see now, let's look at the slopes of the lines tangent to the curve out here. Starting from the left we see that you have a positive slope, positive. Then we hit a zero slope because now we're changing direction in this interval right here. On this whole interval we see that the red curve is sloping downward because it's a decreasing it's decreasing on this interval. See that part? So all of these uh, lines tangent to the curve of red is their slopes are all negative because of these um, lines tangent. And then again we hit a zero slope right about here where you have a we hit a bottom or a valley and then after that it starts back up and starts to increase again so the slopes of the lines tangent to the curve are now positive. Okay, now these positive slopes that means the derivative function will all have positive values that's why the green curve is above the horizontal axis. Okay, so see that they're all positive corresponding to the positive slope. And then we hit a zero, right? At this point. And then it changes direction. The green curve now will have um, negative values because of the slopes being negative. So see all these part of the green curve is now below the x-axis. They're all negative. Until we hit a zero again right there. Why do you think there's a zero there? Because this corresponds to again a zero slope of the line tangent to the curve where there's a zero on the f prime. And you see why we have another zero? Because look, you have another zero slope here. So if you look at the green curve, what you will see then is that Okay, you go down, you see you have another zero of the derivative function. One here and another one here where the slopes are both zero. Then of course onwards uh, it becomes positive and you see the graph of the green curve is now again positive after uh, passing the um, horizontal axis. Okay. Okay, what we're going to do now is match the functions graphed in exercises 27 up to 30 with the derivatives graphed in the accompanying figures from A all the way to D. So let's see how we can match it. Well, first of all, we've seen already that in number 27, this is the graph of, it's very similar to the graph of y is equal to x squared. And remember that the derivative of uh, y equal to x squared is uh, 2x. So we can see that this is a giveaway that 27 is going to be matched with what? Of course, it's going to be letter B right here because, you know, you have uh, negative slopes and then it becomes 0. Then after hitting the valley, it starts back up to become uh, the slopes of the line tangent to the curve. So see we have negative, zero slope, and then it starts to become positive. And see how that matches now our uh, line, the straight line here where you pass through the origin is the same why it passes through origin, that's where uh, 
the slope is zero on the vertex of the blue curve. Of course, it's now increasing to the right of zero because the slopes of the lines tangent to the curve they are all positive. Okay. Okay. Let's carry on and let's see what happens in now in number twenty-eight. We see that every line that is tangent to the curve will be positive because look they're all positive and of course it kind of eases out to become zero again having a slope zero but all of these will still have lines tangent to the curve that are positive see all these lines tangent to the curve well they're positive then it becomes zero but then to the right keeps going and there's still positive slope. So among these three remaining, we'll see which one would match number 28. What do you think? Remember all the slopes are positive, so that means the graph of the derivative function should be non-negative. So which of these are non-negative? It's letter A. See where it's only zero uh, at the origin, where you have a line tangent to the blue curve being zero. Okay, and then to the left, see they're still positive, zero, and then to the right, it's still positive because see, these are positive slopes, those are the y values of the derivative function, and then positive slopes again. So indeed, 28 matches letter A. Okay, now we have two left, Let's see what uh, number 29 looks like. Okay, what we'll do in number 29 is let's look at where you have zero slopes occurring in the curve of number 29. See, those zero slopes correspond to the x-intercepts of the derivative function. So how many are those? Five. So what do you think? There it is, see? you've got five zeros of letter D. So most likely D would match number 29. And then let's check the signs of the derivative function by looking at the slopes of the blue curve. So you have positive, negative, positive, negative, and then positive again. See, it's positive, and then it became negative, then after the zero, positive, negative, and then positive again until it hit a zero. See right there. Okay, positive slope, negative slope, positive slope, negative, and then positive. So surely, sure enough, rather, letter D is matched with number 29. And of course, 30 by elimination matches uh, C, the graph C. But let's see why it's the case. All right, you've got how many um, zero, deri zero uh, derivatives? Yeah, zero slopes. You have one, two, and three right here. So that means the derivative function should have three x-intercepts or three zeros. Well, does this uh, letter C have three zeros occurring at where you have a zero slope? One, two, and three. Indeed, it matches. Then, of course, here you have negative slope, positive, negative, and then positive again. Okay, so let's see if it matches uh, the negative slope to a negative value of C, yes? Then that's positive, right? The negative slope, negative values of the slope function, positive. So there it's increasing, so you have a positive slope. So we've finished the graphs. Cool. We've matched each one. Okay, here what we've got is just to show you that the derivatives at the endpoints are one sided limits. Okay, so here you've got the left endpoint at x equal to a, and then the right endpoint at b. 
and you see how those secant lines ease into the tangent line and that is when h is positive so then um, you have the limit of this uh, secant line you know the slope of the secant line as h approaches zero coming from the right and then on the other side then you have the that's when h is negative okay then your secant line would be easing into the tangent line where you take the limit of this ratio as h approaches zero coming from the left well you might of course, you know, we can be curious now, of when is a function not differentiable? So example 4 will show this. In example 4, okay, show that the function, the absolute value of x is differentiable everywhere except, okay, where is it not differentiable? You see that it's everywhere except where? It says it has no derivative at x equal to 0. Well, let's see just by graphing it, by the graph of the, the absolute value function, you see that to the left of zero, the slope of the line tangent, which is the slope itself, because it's a line, is negative one. And then to the right of zero, what's the derivative of uh, the diagonal line? It's just the slope is one. Okay, so you see that y prime is not defined at x equal to 0. Okay, what's the absolute value? Again, it's equal to itself if x is greater than or equal to 0. And it's negative x if x is less than 0. What is the corresponding derivative now? Okay, let's see. What is y prime? y prime would be, what's the derivative of x? It's just 1 if x is greater than or equal to 0. And y prime is negative 1, that's the slope, if x is less than 0. And of course, where did we get that? From the slope of this line. Remember, the slope of x is just what? What's the slope of x? 1. What is the slope of y equal to negative x? The slope is negative 1. And see from the left and right of 0, you have a di uh, different derivatives, and that's where the problem lies. They should have been equal to each other if it's differentiable at x equal to 0. And what happens here is that you've got a wedge occurring at the origin. Okay, also when we have a corner where one side, one sided derivatives differ. Okay, so to the left of P, you see this uh, Q approaching P, and it's easing into a tangent line from the left. Okay, right there, see it's easing into that tangent line okay but now what happens uh, to the right of P these secant lines would now approach a different see how it approaches a different tangent line from coming from the right so that's why it's not differentiable there you have a corner Another case is when um, the slopes uh, from the left and from the right approach a um, undefined line tangent to the at P. See how there you have a vertical line, so you have a change up of uh, different derivatives approaching infinity and negative infinity from the other side. So that's a cusp. You have a cusp occurring there at P. Okay, and then in number three, you have a, a vertical tangent. Then, of course, this what is the slope of a vertical line? It's undefined. And then when you have a discontinuity, like these two examples shown here, you have a jump and see how um, you can't have a common 
tangent line it's undefined and then here the same way okay because uh, in the first place P is not uh, P has a it's not it's defined somewhere else it's not on the curve so then you don't have differentiability so theorem 1 then says that differentiability implies continuity which means if f has a derivative at x equal to c then it's implied that the function is already continuous at x equal to c however continuity does not always imply differentiability let's see remember our example y is equal to the absolute value of x and we've seen how the wedge or the corner there caused the problem for y e not having a derivative at the origin see there okay so it doesn't have a derivative at the origin well let's see this means that just because it's continuous does not imply that it will have a derivative everywhere but look at this you've got a squared function y is equal to x squared and the derivative is 2x and it's defined everywhere because you know you have a smooth curve when we have y equal to x squared you've got a smooth uh, graph of y equal to x squared 